Good morning, good morning, everybody. Welcome to Lake Forest Church. My name is Harrison. It is good to be here with you this morning. And today is a, uh, a fun day that we get to do a couple times a year. We celebrate what God has been doing in the life of our church. So we're going to start things off by standing to our feet together and uh, just taking a moment to give God the credit and the glory and the honor for everything that he has done and continues to do. Let's sing this morning.
time finding joy. Those who've lost their homes in California. And God, those right here that are grieving in ways that they maybe haven't before for a loss. Father God, we pray a special prayer over them. God, that you would be nearer to them than maybe they've ever experienced before. And we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. My name is Cammie Howard, and I'm the Family Ministry Director here at Lake Forest. And I want to welcome you this morning. I do also want to let you know, for those who are here for the first time, the disco lights that were going on back there, that was unintentional, okay? I did see some people dancing, and I'm like, go with it, okay. Well, this morning when you came in, you received one of these cards. And on this card, there is a place for you to learn a little bit more about us, but there's also a place for you to write your prayer request. We would love to pray for you this week. So you can write that, you can tear it off, you can drop that in the jeans pocket. That's going to come by a little bit later in the service. That's also what we use to take up our tithes and our offerings for those who call Lake Forest home. And if you can't get all that done before your prayer request, whatever, you can drop it in the treasure box that is right in the back of the service. Okay, a couple things going on beyond Sunday morning. First of all, tonight we are having a community Thanksgiving worship service tonight. And it's just really cool. These are some churches that are coming together. We've done this before, and it's going to be a great time together. And this is going to be at 6 o'clock p.m. tonight at First Baptist Church, Huntersville. Mike will be a part of that and in fact he's going to be preaching so we would love to see you there now I'm going to switch our attention to Christmas don't be mad at me I'm just the messenger okay we will celebrate Thanksgiving I'm switching but the reason why I'm doing that I want to let you know about our Christmas Eve services so that you can be thinking about and praying about who is your one more person that you want to invite this year so we have six identical services we're going to have two services on Christmas Eve Eve and then we have four services on Christmas Eve and all of those services have child care for zero through four one other thing that we're doing during this season is we like to, as a church, have a focus together on a ministry that we are going to be generous to this season. for these folks, specific ones. You'll go online at lakeforest.org slash toy store and you will choose a specific toy that you will buy. Then what they're going to do is they're going to have this toy store. They will put all those toys on the shelf and then folks can come in and they can shop when they come in and also that will be for a very, very nominal cost. So go ahead and go online and we're going to partner in making this happen. Well, this morning is a special morning. Three times a year, we hold our baptism services as well as we welcome new ministry partners to join. So if you are being baptized or your child is being baptized this morning, if you would go ahead and join us on the stage. Yes, please come up uh, if you're being baptized or your child is being baptized. Uh, this is one of our favorite Sundays. And by the way, we expect crying uh, in our bab on our baptism Sundays. And so uh, we had some at the first service, and, uh, uh, and so it's okay. And so it's even okay for you adults who've always wanted to cry out loud in church. This is your Sunday, because we just, we just let it be noisy. It's great. This is a multi-generational deal. Um, we, uh, we engage in baptism not because it's some religious tradition that we need to keep going. We baptize, and, and we ourselves are baptized because we follow Jesus. And, and Jesus was baptized himself, so I want to follow him and do what he did. But Jesus said that all of those who are his followers to publicly say so, that I am a Christian, and to be baptized to signify that. So we do that. We don't believe that baptism is the moment of salvation when you become right with God. Uh, baptism, for we have two who will be baptized as adults. Uh, in their case, we're looking backward to their moment of faith when they put their faith in Jesus and were reconciled to God by grace. So adult baptism, we got lots of good criers here. Adult baptism, I had two boys growing up, and they were all boys, so I, it doesn't bother me at all. Um, 
Adult baptism is looking backward to their moment of faith. When the, the, these babies who will be baptized, uh, we're looking forward. It's a family of faith who is looking forward by faith to a moment when they pray their child will one day put their personal faith in Jesus. When Abraham in the Old Testament first came to know the good loving God who revealed himself as Yahweh, that God said, put a sign on your children to mark them as part of my covenant family. In the New Testament, Peter at the first ser Christian sermon said, this promise is for you and your children. And when new believers were baptized there in the New Testament, they, they would baptize their household to apply the sign of faith to their children. So what this is for those, the babies here is baptism is really for looking, it's like a little engagement ring saying, there's an extra measure of grace in this child's life because they're in a family where Jesus is worshiped and followed. And, and by faith, we're claiming, oh Lord, would you lead my child at a young age to put their faith in Jesus? She's saying, Pastor Mike, that's great. Get on with it. We're going we're gonna to do the, 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 the infant baptisms first, and so I have questions for you parents to answer. This is the most technical and Presbyterian we ever get at Lake Forest because it's a big deal. So those of you who are having your child baptized, uh, do you acknowledge your child's need of the cleansing blood of Jesus Christ and their need for the renewing grace of the Holy Spirit? Do you? Do you claim God's covenant promises and benefits for your child? Would you say your child's name out? loud right now? Do you claim God's covenant promises and benefits for that child and by faith are you looking to Jesus eventually for their salvation just as you look to him for your salvation now? Do you? Do you now unreservedly dedicate your child to God and do you promise by relying on God's power and grace through the Holy Spirit to live an exemplary life before them? Do you? Do you commit yourself to pray with and for your child? To t this is the stepping up it, up it up as a parent pledge when you baptize your child. Do you commit yourself to pray with and for your child to teach them the scriptures and the great truths about Jesus? Do you? Yeah. Do you promise to use every means provided by God, including faithful participation in the life of this or any other church, to bring your child up in the loving knowledge of the Lord? Do you? Well, you're not alone. Part of what we do here every Sunday is, 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 is nurture and tend the faith of one another's children. And so, ministry partners, uh, uh, you're in this with them. And so, I have a question for you. Uh, and thank you for the way so many of you serve weekly in Kidtropolis. Well done. Um, do you, the members of, of Lake Forest Church, acting for yourselves and on behalf of the whole body of Christ, do you assume responsibility with these parents for the spiritual nurture of their children? Do you? And do you commit yourselves to set a godly example before them, to provide as far as you're able all that's necessary to the end that these children may one day confess Jesus Christ as their Savior and Lord? Do you? Wonderful. Wonderful. Well, Lord, this is regular old water, but we set it aside for your high and holy purposes. We're regular old people, but we set them aside, especially these children, for your high and holy purposes in their life. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, why don't we start, we'll just go right down this way. So, guys, come on up. Hello. Would, would she like to stay with you, you think, Kristen? Okay, okay. <laughs> what is the full Christian name of your child? Anna Elizabeth Kruger. Anna Elizabeth Kruger, child of God's promise, beloved of God. I baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Hmm. And what is this young man's full Christian name? Lucas Benjamin Kruger. Lucas Benjamin Kruger, child of God's promise, beloved of God. I baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> hey, you think maybe you come to me? Hello. Oh, cutie. What is your son's full Christian name? Nathan David. Nathan David Italia, child of God's promise, beloved of God. I baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Made you drop your passy. <laughs> Let's fall down. Okay. 
Hello. What, uh, what do you think? Should she stay with you? Oh, she can go with you. Okay, hello. I'm not good at how to hold girls with dresses, though. <laughs> I didn't learn that. Hello. What is her full Christian name? Bailey Brooke Italia, child of God's promise, beloved of God. I baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son oh, and the Holy Spirit. Quick. <laughs> Thank you. Aww. <laughs> and are, are you being baptized? Yes. What is your full Christian, your full name? Ella Avery Brown, child of God's promise, beloved of God. I baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs> Several hands full here. Hello, you, you all. Those guys last year. <laughs> okay, okay, that's right. Uh, hello. Hello, you, you want to, what do you think? Let's just stay right there. <laughs> what is her full name? Ellie Kathleen Devins. Ellie Kathleen Devins. Child of God's promise. Beloved of God, I baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. Hello, you all. These two children are being baptized, and then mom will be baptized in just a moment. This is a really special thing. Um, would you like to go first? What is your, what is his full name? Colton James Palladino. Colton James Palladino, child of God's promise, beloved of God. I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hello. And what is your daughter's full name? Addison Lee Palladino. Addison Lee Palladino, child of God's promise, beloved of God. I baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. <laughs> well done, bud. Well done. Okay. Hello. What is her full Christian name? Isabella Grace Keller. Isabella Grace Keller, child of God's promise, beloved of God. I baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good job. She did good. Yeah. And now, Catherine and Ashley, if you two would please step forward. So... We were looking forward by faith to a moment of personal faith for these children, and Catherine and Ashley have now put their faith in Jesus Christ and want to acknowledge that uh, through baptism, which uh, represents the signs and the seals of all of God's good gifts to you that are had by salvation through Jesus Christ. So just a simple question for you two, Catherine and Ashley. Uh, have you acknowledged yourself to be a sinner in need of God's salvation? Have you? Yeah. Have you put your faith in Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior? Yes. And do you uh, promise to seek to live a life uh, of a follower of Jesus Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit? Will you? Yes. Okay. Wonderful. Well, Catherine, my longtime friend, come on up. right here and if you can just kneel down there this is a privilege and an honor to share this moment with you Catherine what is your full name Catherine Lena, Holloway. Catherine Lena Holloway child of God's promise beloved of God I baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit rise to walk in newness of life Let's step right in. What a joy to share this with you and your family today, a special day. What is your full name? Uh, Ashley Hammond Palladino. Ashley Hammond Palladino, child of God's promise, beloved of God. I baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son 
and the Holy Spirit. <laughs> oh, and uh, Nico has agreed. Uh, Nico, you've served in our worship arts ministry for many years. And uh, would you just say a moment of, of what, on behalf of everyone else, what does this mean to you today to have your children baptized? I think what it means for us is um, that we want to commit our children um, to God. Um, it's a commitment on our part, but hopefully at some point a commitment on their part. I think uh, I view it, and I don't know if this aligns with theology, but I view it as a tattoo. We're putting a tattoo on them, and we hope that they embrace it, uh, but right now we want them to wear it, uh, and then maybe in the future uh, they'll show it openly. Analogy for what this is and what it means. Um, what? Uh, uh, how do you? As I said, one of the vows is also kind of a, a step up moment as a parent to be the the shepherd of your child's heart and their spirit. What's some of that? You think that'll mean for you guys? I think we've raised them. Uh, we've tried to raise them the right way, but it, it is a reminder for us to step up our game, to to really lead by example, mm -hmm. to be more intentional to live a Christ-driven life and do so openly, to pray God, uh, to pray to God openly, uh, to uh, worship Him intentionally, and to have our kids see that. Yeah. So a great reminder for us. Wow, well, and well done to all of you uh, to be loving God and putting Him in the center of your home by actions, not just words. And we pray that over you for the rest of your life as a parent. So thank you all for coming up. Uh, if you're joining as a ministry partner, you can stay up. If, if you've already joined, you can go down. And any of you becoming a ministry partner this morning, if you would come join us on stage for just a moment. So let's, let's uh, encourage these guys one more time. Well, as the ministry partners come forward, this is another part of our service that we're so excited about. The folks that are coming up and becoming ministry partners, they've gone through a three-week class called Welcome 101. And in that class, they have an opportunity to learn more about the church. They have an opportunity to learn more about their faith, where they're going to serve and jump in. And this really is a commitment that they are making to Lake Forest. So they come up this morning, and for some of them, this is really a fresh step of faith. For some who have given their life to Christ, this may be the first time that they're standing up to publicly acknowledge that. And then for others, they are coming and they are to us, they're partnering with us in ministry. They're using the ministry that God gave them and they're linking up with the ministry going on here at Lake Forest. We very intentionally do not use the term member, but we use the term partner, ministry partner, because that is our hope that they will partner with us in ministry. So. As ministry partners, you're making a public commitment to God and to this body. This commitment comes by answering yes to these five questions. Do you acknowledge that your relationship with God was beyond repair until God, by his grace and mercy, repaired it and reached out to you? Do you believe that the Lord Jesus Christ is the Son of God and the healer of lives, and do you depend on him alone to reconcile you to God? Do you promise by relying humbly on God and the Holy Spirit to live as a follower of Christ whose life points people to God? Do you promise to serve Christ as part of this church, not simply sitting and soaking, but sacrificially serving others on Sunday morning and throughout the week? Do you submit yourself to the accountability and spiritual oversight of this church's leaders, and do you promise to promote the unity, purity, and peace of the church? Let me pray for you all. God, we thank you for these friends. God, we thank you for the step of faith by standing up here, God, and the ways that they are linking up with the ministry here at Lake Forest. Father, we look forward to seeing what you are going to do in these folks and through these folks. We're excited to see that. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Give them a hand as they head off. <laughs> Well, 
Well, uh, since it's kind of a, 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 a family day, like the church family, uh, let me just take a moment and have a, a little moment of a family update as, as a congregation. And I, I do this uh, every November. I kind of uh, give a financial or uh, update to our family. Just like whatever household you're a part of, hopefully every now and then you're like, hey, how we, how's that part of our life going? And so I just wanted to give you a quick update. Uh, big picture, we're a 20-year-old church. Uh, and every single year in our history, uh, the congregation has given more to the ministry and mission of our church uh, than we've anticipated. So we've always, more has been given than we've budgeted every year. At the same time, every one of our 20 years, um, our staff and leaders have underspent what we've budgeted for the year. And so that's kind of a good track record. And so uh, that's what we're praying for again this year. So I would like for you all to give your own selves a hand, ministry partners. And so uh, uh, congregational giving this year to date through uh, the end of October is significantly higher than it was a year ago. Um, our church has grown in our reach of people by about 10% the, just this fall, uh, and our giving is reflecting that, and that's wonderful. Um, it's a little bit behind of where we had projected it to be this time of year, so by just about uh, 25 3%. Uh, but it's above where it was last year, and so that's good news. Now, in the church world, the reason I, I give this update in November is that uh, about 25% of all of our ministry and missions giving to Lake Forest comes in in the last uh, six to eight weeks of the year. So that's a, a, a big chunk. Um, it's just kind of how church world is. So what we're asking God for and what we're praying for, and I'm passing along to you as the family, is that we, that... 25% of the giving that, w that we anticipate in the budget would come in as well as that shortfall uh, of the year-to-date of that uh, 3%. And so that's just what we're praying and asking God for in this next couple of months, and I'd like to ask you to pray for that as well. Um, and this is as much as anything saying thank you, if you worship here, for your generosity um, of this church family uh, throughout the year to, to power missions and ministry uh, in the name of Jesus here in our community and around the world. Like, thank you and well done. In particular, there are some of you who are visionary givers and over and above your regular tithes and offerings. You've been giving. Uh, this is the second year to our immeasurably more vision to make room for one more person at a time. And clearly, God has met us at, a, at that aspiration. All the babies that were baptized in the first service and this service, we doubled our children's ministry, our nursery, just in time. Uh, for the people God wanted to send. So I just want to say well done in that as well. The immeasurably more giving is about on track. It's just a little lagging of the schedule for that. So I just encourage you that way too. So family moment as we get into these last couple of months. If you've been sitting on the sideline or, or waiting for your generosity, this is a time to maybe ask if, if this is a time God would activate you. Just find one way to be part of the mission here. And as God makes you willing and as God makes you able to find a way to be generous through the ministry of your church. And so if you haven't really been able to give at all or you've just found a way to start giving, you've dipped your toe in the water, um, all we want here is that those who are a regular part of our home to, to find a way to, uh, to build in proactive, purposeful giving. We're never about Hey, in the moment, guilt people and motivate. We're, we're about what the scriptures say. Is you, we just, it's a part of our life. We plan and we pray, and then we purposefully give as we are led to be generous. So let me pray about all this, and then we'll worship the Lord together. Heavenly Father, you're really good. We love you. Thank you for how you protect our church family. Thank you for how you provide for our church family. And we see you show up every year in this way. God, I pray that you would move in our hearts and minds to make each of us more generous. Thank you for the ways this congregation is living counterculturally, not as merely consumers, but as those who spend themselves on behalf of others. And help us to, to see, take joy in seeing the ministry fruit that happens through our generosity here in our church and through ministries around the world. And God, for those in our congregation who are unemployed or financially devastated for some reason, we pray that they will never, as they participate at Lake Forest, receive any guilt or shame out of this, but instead uh, trust you for their current needs uh, as we trust you for everything. It's in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thanks for uh, giving me that family discussion moment. Let's stand up and worship the Lord together.
And can we just take a moment to just sit in that love? To sit in thankfulness. Uh, in gratitude for a love that, uh, that would not leave us behind. A love that sent your son to die for us so that we can be made right with you. We are thankful for that as we uh, just catch a glimpse of how great your love is for us uh, to know that we are made in your image and we matter to you. We are worth saving to you and we're thankful for that. It's in Jesus' name we pray all these things together this morning. Well, hello. I, I failed to introduce myself earlier because uh, I know we have uh, guests and family members uh, for baptisms especially. My name is Mike, and I'm privileged to be lead pastor here. Uh, we're going to spend a few minutes in our sermon series this morning, shorter than normal. So I met this guy a couple weeks ago. I was out playing golf at Burkdale. Not very well that day, uh, but that's not part of the story. And we were, it was about hole number five when it came out that I'm a pastor. One of my little ways, by the way, in life that I crack myself up is I try to see how far I can get into a golf round before the dudes playing with me know that I'm a pastor. And it's really fun to be on like the 15th hole and it finally comes out and then I see them rewinding everything they said <laughs> and did. That's just one of my little ways of, of cracking myself up, um, by the way. So if you ever play golf with me, don't out me to your friends. Um, I'm really good at hiding that. So I'm playing with this guy. And it turns out, he finds out I'm a pastor, and he goes, man, I just became a Christian like a few weeks ago at a local church here. And so we had a great time talking about faith, and I was encouraging him. I was, I was so happy for that church. It's one of our partner churches. It just made me happy. And, uh, and, and at one point, though, he said, well, Pastor Mike, um, now he started calling me pastor uh, already. Uh, I'm like, man, you're going to ruin my game. But um, uh, yeah, Pastor Mike, um, it's awesome that you have such a meaningful, significant job. Uh, you know, my job is just a secular job. It doesn't have any meaning or significance. And my heart dropped, because that's actually the subject of this sermon series, that after like three weeks of being a Christian, somehow this guy had gotten it from Christian culture or whatever culture, that in God's eyes, Christian ministry is significant. And what you do in other jobs, normal jobs all throughout the week, doesn't much matter to him less important. And that's what this sermon series is about, is breaking down this, this uh, destructive, delimiting dichotomy that has gotten into us and even into the church culture, that, that Christian ministry, religious work, uh, or, or, or some other service industries is more significant and meaningful in God's eyes than regular work or secular work. And this is a, a diabolical dichotomy, I would say. And, and what we're learning in this series, uh, pop quiz, <laughs> pop quiz, get ready. I, 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 is it true or false that ministry work I, 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 is more meaningful than other work? True or false? false? False, you passed. Okay, so we can quit the sermon series and just go home. So I think we got it. No. I don't want to quit because I love looking into this and I'm trying to teach myself. So whether consciously or, or unintentionally, the, 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 in Christian circles or, or dudes like me, all too frequently send the signal that work in Christian ministry matters and work in the world doesn't. And, and that that part of your life just is, is sort of, faith doesn't so much apply except to your morality. And, and therefore, it's no surprise that workers, those in the service industry, students, uh, uh, business people, entrepreneurs often feel unsupported by their Sunday church in their Monday marketplace vocation. And that's what we want to talk about for a few minutes this morning, mostly by looking at Jesus. Reading the Gospel of Mark, 
with a, a fresh lens of, of uh, hey, we're thinking, I'm thinking about work. What does this say about my work? You actually might not read past a small detail that I've mostly read past in my life. And perhaps you have too. And this detail makes a big difference. It's in Mark chapter 6, and we're told that Jesus, who is now spending time as a traveling rabbi, he's come back to his hometown of Nazareth in the mountains of northern Israel. Now, Angie and I have been there in Nazareth, and uh, uh, it's, it's a mountain town. And Nazareth is to Jerusalem what Boone is to Charlotte in elevation and, and distance. And, and so the, he, this hometown crowd is listening to Jesus teach in the synagogue, and they're stunned. This hometown boy display, dis, dis, displaying power and wisdom and authority. Because in their eyes, Jesus is just a carpenter from our small town. And here's what they said, Mark chapter 6, verse 3. Is not this the what? The carpenter? That's what Jesus is. By the way, the Greek word there is tekton, which is pretty cool. It makes it sound like Jesus is a, uh, 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 one of those things that turns into robots and machines. Transformer. Jesus, the tekton. Uh, but that's what his job is, and, and it may mean carpenter, it may mean builder more generally. But he was a carpenter or a builder. They're like, is it the, this is just the tecton, the, yeah, the son of Mary and brothers, James and Joseph, Judas and Simon, which if this was in Boone, North Carolina, their way of saying that would be, isn't this the carpenter? You know, he's with mama and them. That's kind of what, what, what they're saying. And, and are not his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. Interesting. Jesus spent so much time on earth working with his hands in a carpentry shop or building structures. Here's the Son of God sent to earth on a redemptive mission of seeking and saving the lost, proclaiming the gospel, and yet he spent the vast majority of his years on earth making things in an obscure carpentry shop in the mountain town of Nazareth. Now, we, we know from Luke's gospel Luke chapter 2, that even at the age of 12, Jesus already demonstrated amazing spiritual and intellectual brilliance as he was meeting with even the top religious and political leaders in Jerusalem. So at 12, he was already like Jesus, Jesus, Jesus Christ, Jesus. And yet, how did that brilliance fit in with a carpentry career? Why is it? that his heavenly father's will was for Jesus to spend so much of his earthly time in the carpentry shop rather than when he could have used all those years leading up to his ministry proclaiming the gospel and healing people. Why is this? This gives value and dignity to work as we meditate on Jesus, the tecton, the carpenter. <laughs> New Testament, uh, the New Testament shows us that Jesus only spent about three years in his quote-unquote religious job his itinerant ministry of teaching and healing. That was three years from the ages of, of age 30 to 33. And so he, scholars say he, prob, he worked his job as a carpenter for 20 years before that. Because most boys uh, in that culture, he would have started as what we would call a full-time carpenter's apprentice by the age of 10, or, or no, certainly no later than 12. He had a 20-year career as a carpenter. Not walk around teaching, healing, uh, but just as a carpenter. This is really important to meditate on, I think. Speaking of Jesus as a carpenter, Dallas Willard brings this perspective. Quote, if Jesus were to come today as he did then, he could carry out his mission through most any decent and useful job. He could be a clerk or an accountant in a hardware store, a computer repair person, a banker, an editor, a doctor, a waiter, a teacher, a farmhand, a lab technician, or construction worker. He could run a housekeeping service or fix cars. In other words, if Jesus were to come today, he could very well do what you do. Very well live in your apartment or your house, hold down your job, have your education and life experiences, prospects. None of this would be the least hindrance to the eternal quality of life that was his by nature and is available to us through Jesus himself. And so clearly the son of God, Jesus, was much more than a carpenter. He was the savior of the world, the Messiah, but he wasn't any less than a carpenter. And, and we'll call this an incarnational pattern of Jesus' earthly life, and it speaks volumes about the importance of your day-to-day -day work life. And if you're a student, that's your work. If you're a homemaker, stay-at-home parent, that's your work. 
This dignifies your work all day, every day, however many hours, however many days a week you do it. That Jesus had a 20-year career. Think, think of all the time. Who in history during those 20 years as a carpenter could have more been able to go, man, they're just not leveraging all my talents in my job. You know, I, I, I feel like I could do so much more. Like, it, all of us have probably said that at some point in our job or in our school. Who more than Jesus? And yet, he was content. He was satisfied to work at being a carpenter for two decades. Experiencing the, the satisfaction of seeing, man, people sitting at that table in comfortable chairs I made, breaking bread together as a family with the satisfaction of good work well done and with the, the struggles of work in a fallen world. Difficult customers. Maybe his dad, Joseph, was a horrible boss. We don't know. But he would have dealt with all the stresses and joys that you and I do in our work. Whatever your work is, this incarnational pattern of Jesus means for you that, that no matter how ordinary your job seems, it can be extraordinary work brimming with God-honoring importance and significance if it's done well and for the glory of God. Jesus' abundant life included hard work as a carpenter. Your abundant life includes your job. And when we think about this, th this is stunning to me, really, to meditate that he had a 20-year carpentry career. Uh, it shows us that Jesus didn't think being a carpenter was below, beneath him or a poor use of his many t gifts and talents. Uh, this is the one whose hands not only created the world, but the very wood he was crafting in the carpentry shop. So Jesus, the carpenter, Jesus, the Messiah, who Colossians 1 tells us, Jesus is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. By him all things were created, in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible. They were, all things were created through him and for him, and he's in him all things hold together. So friends, th this very one who was the master craftsman who crafted the cosmos and the meteor shower that's flying by us right this second, I'm going to try to glimpse it tonight, is the one who made tables and chairs for people to gather around the table in their houses. We must know that Jesus must have had well-worked, calloused, and strong hands from his work. Yes. Now, this is kind of cool. On Baptism Sunday, let's reflect on one more little bit of this. That Jesus did not see his work as mundane or meaningless, and his heavenly Father saw this as part of his life. It was work his heavenly Father had called him to do through the family he was born in, because that's what Joseph's occupation was. Now, kind of cool, on Baptism Sunday, at Jesus' baptism, his heavenly Father said something about Jesus. And this is before he went into religious employment. This is at the end of his 20-year carpentry career. When Jesus came up out of the water at baptism, the Holy Spirit descended like a dove, and a voice from heaven said, This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. Which, by the way, if you put your faith in Jesus, God's grace to you, is he sees you exactly the same way all the time when you're working, even when you're sleeping. Oh, my beloved daughter, my beloved son, in whom I'm well pleased. And, and, and when uh, his heavenly father said this about Jesus, one of the things that was well-pleasing about Jesus' life to him was his work as a carpenter, was well-pleasing to him. Now, th th this kind of thinking may be new to you, but the language and doctrine of Christian vocation is not a fad. It's foundational to an integral, healthy Christian faith. Uh, for many centuries, vocation has been a full-throated theology for ordinary, everyday life, and it's often forgotten. And we treat the rest of the, the church part of our life or the religious activities as spiritual.